winner is Montana! Hostile <laughs> <laughs> duders! We spawned a giant minion. See it safely to our altar. It is over! <laughs> Sometimes you just have to sit back and ask yourself, do I want to play the medic from TF2, but as a fungus? If you answered yes, that's oddly specific, but that's okay, because that's what this character is all about. Enter Miko, the mushroom tip champion from Battleborn. Let's sit down and talk about what this character is all about, what he can do, and give you guys a build you can use from day one without ever having touched the character, so you can go out there and start healing your friends. Check it out. Miko's primary weapon are throwing daggers, or kunai. He holds about six of them before he has to reload, and he throws them at an arc. They actually have a really long travel time, so it's hard to hit a moving target from a distance, but point blank they do okay. They also have a poison damage component that, if you can hit a target, they'll get a couple of ticks of damage over two seconds. Overall, these weapons serve as a self-defense if you have no other option. Uh, you can assassinate someone that's low on health, but generally you don't have enough damage to take someone one-on-one. -on -one. The superior range allows you to actually hit and harass other ranged characters from a distance, but you won't be killing them. However, it is useful for gradually taking out turrets if you can find a safe spot to shoot at them from. Now, his kunai are his left click, but to his kit, his right click is much more important. His right click sends out a green healing beam that has no ammo, you can keep it on as long as you're in range, and it continuously heals your target, which you can heal friendly bots or you can heal other players. Uh, the range is kind of short, so you have to stay close, and unfortunately, it has a bad habit of changing to other targets that you don't intend to, so it can be difficult to stay on the other target. The best tip I can give you is to stay as close to your target as possible, but at the same time, you need to make sure that you're staying out of their way so you're not blocking them if they're trying to move around, because then you could end up killing them instead of helping them if you block them and they take some hits that they could have gotten out of the way of if you weren't there. However, I feel that his right click is much stronger, and it's something you should be doing the majority of the time, either healing your allies when they're actually being hit or topping them off when they're out of combat. Now for Miko's first skill, Biosynthesis. What this does is it puts a big heal over time effect on them that lasts about 5 seconds. And as a side benefit, and probably more importantly, during it, your right click healing beam actually heals for 50% more. So use it both to heal yourself, keep yourself alive, and when you need to get that extra burst of healing on your friends. Miko's second ability, Cloud of Spores, is basically a mushroom grenade that he throws out in front of him. Any enemy that's directly hit by the spore, or that's in the blast radius when it explodes, takes damage and is slowed. The grenade also leaves behind a smoke field that slows any enemies that stay inside. Because of this aspect, Miko can use it both as an escape mechanism, throwing it in front of him, and then enemies running behind him that get caught in the cloud get slowed down, allowing him to escape. Or he can use it as a way to trap enemies so his allies can pounce on them by throwing the grenade in front of where he thinks that they're going to go. Now, for Miko's ultimate, Fungus Among Us, he basically puts down this giant mushroom psychedelic thing that has a small area of effect around it. Any allies, including yourself, that stand within it are healed for a pretty decent amount. It lasts for about 45 seconds, and it's actually pretty fragile, so it's very easy for enemies to focus fire and take it down quick. So you want to make sure you're putting it in a safe spot where they can't fire at it. The two main uses for this are to A, put it next to your more stationary allies, so that way they have a little place where they can sit down, keep healing, and keep putting out their fire. Or B, you want to use this to create a fallback point where your allies can run back, heal up, and then get back into the fight. Now, to talk about the build that I use when I'm playing Miko, we're going to focus on healing our allies and keeping ourselves alive, using our right-click healing beam as much as possible. For our first talent choice, we're going to pick first responder. The reason we're picking that is because we need speed in order to keep up with our allies, and we need speed in order to get out of their way when they start backing up. And so first responder is a perfect choice. For our second level, we're going to take heal thyself. Now this might surprise you because regenerative aura does help in healing your teammates, 
But what you're going to find is that you can't heal yourself with your healing beam unless you take heal thyself. It is an incredible way to keep yourself alive and keep yourself going. And even if you can heal your allies with regenerative aura, healing thyself, you'll keep yourself alive longer. You can do more. You can heal your allies longer. So in the long term, heal thyself is the stronger choice for self-preservation, keeping yourself alive. For our level three, we're going to pick evolution emergence. And that's because we're very skill-based and having more uptime on our Q ability lets us use it more often, lets us heal more, keeps us alive longer. So we're going to go for that one, reduce cooldown. Now this one, for our level four, we're going to pick Spore Shock. Because the stun effect, if you can land it, is incredible. You can stun an enemy, and then if your allies are with you, you can actually stand behind them and physically blotty box them and, and keep them from moving forward. And it's an incredible ability. And if you miss, it, it's just the normal Spore. It'll have the stun and damage component, so it doesn't matter. It makes him a much much more powerful support and increases his ganking ability exponentially it's also a great self-defense option for his level five i take toxic transfusion now i don't take pandemic because i don't really use the kunai that much and even if i did the poison component doesn't really do that much damage so neither of these choices really make that big of a difference but lifesteal on the poison you always need more healing so if you ever find yourself in with an opportunity to attack something you're actually healing yourself, keeping yourself alive, going with that self-preservation. For the level six, we're going to take probiotics. That's going to increase our Q, biosynthesis, heal more, keep us alive longer. It only heals us, but healing us means we can heal others better. So that goes along with the self-preservation. For our level seven, we take flight or fight. Again, self-preservation. The speed boost along with our level one pick can make us incredibly fast and very hard for enemies to attack us and kill us and allows us to escape or to rescue allies if they're being hunted down. It's a great talent choice. For our level Now, for our level eight, we're going to take bio synergy. And the reason is because even though residency will help you out in pinches when you need that burst healing for longer... Overall, biosynergy will allow you to get more off and give you more sustain and have a greater presence on the battlefield. And it actually causes you to heal yourself more and have greater numbers on the charts from what I've seen. So we're going to go with biosynergy. For our level 9, we're going to pick Spore Storm because ideally we're getting those direct hits and getting those stuns off, which will cause Resilient Strain or Spore Storm to just be a moot point because it, there's no cloud that pops up when you get the stun off. But when you miss, you want to affect as many enemies as you can. The slow does not keep them in the field long enough for resilient strain to matter, so we're going to pick Spore Storm here. And then for our last level 10, we're going to pick Bark Skin, because that's going to allow our mushroom to live longer, take more damage, heal us longer, and hopefully we can get more out of it. We can't use Viscous Strain against other players, because that causes enemies to target them. And even if you're playing PvE... The bots can, the enemies that you're fighting will target them and take it down. And it's too fragile to use it in an offensive way. Okay, now let's wrap this whole thing together. Your ultimate role on the battlefield, especially with this kit that I've designed, is to be helping your teammates by healing them, topping them off, keeping them healthy in the middle of the fight. This is what you do. You're not the strongest damage. You don't really have that much gank potential. You don't have that much maneuverability. You're not really good at taking mercenary camps but you have good healing. You can keep up the sustainability, and this is what you should be focusing on. You should be trying to use your right-click heal beam as much as possible. If you see your allies are all topped off, then feel free to do other things. But if you even see a sliver, do not hesitate to run over to them and top them off, because a lot of heroes do not have regenerative capacity, and the ones that don't have shields usually have really long health pools that don't regenerate fast enough. So you're always better off running up and healing your allies and this build helps you when you're healing your allies when you hit level four and you get those spore bombs you can start getting stuns off that really helps you get more uh, ganking opportunities if an enemy gets too close you can stun them and then your other allies can jump on them and just destroy them or you can use it defensively if someone jumps on you you can interrupt abilities with it it's really powerful and then when you hit level five you want to start looking for places to put your healing mushroom your ultimate fungus among us to get the maximum benefit out of it and to keep it from just getting destroyed you don't just want to throw it out unless you're going to die then you might as well but normally you want to try to put a little bit more thought and put it in a hidden spot that enemies can't access but your allies can it'll keep them 
go and keep them healthy. Now I'm also going to upload a video to go along with this to show how this build works in action from the beginning of the game towards the mid game. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this provided some insight into this character and I hope to be doing many, many more. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon again in future videos. This is Twinkle Butt out.